Mm, g'day, Tragic here, and welcome back to another Major Night testing session. This is night day two, and as you might know, with these testing sessions, what I'm doing is I'm actually uploading six rounds, but from all from different games, like different play testing sessions that I've done. So round one and two is one time I played. Round three and four is a completely different game. There might be like four or five different variations of modifying the cards and playing different games before you see that. And then I'll do another one, which is five and six. The game that this is the night session of had a really good start. We got all the entire map explored by the end of the first night, which is what you want to do if possible. So we got all the gold tiles out. And... I was able to do some pretty awesome comboing moves with the Necromancer. So I could actually finally see, like I finally adjusted his power levels, I think, to a way where I can get the combos to work. So he's actually comboing correctly now. The question is, is he really comboing well? Or is it just that I happen to have Crystal Mastery, the card, which is allowing me to do my moves without spending my mana, basically. Anyway, whatever. We'll see you in more playtesting. The point is... This is uh, the next video, and this is the last video of this particular game. But if people want, I might upload the final two rounds to this game because it, like I said, had a great start. They're, they're really leveled up and got a lot of power, and it's, a, it's a, a really good game. Okay, well, that's about that. That's a little introduction on, and um, yeah, let's get into it. Okay, beautiful coffee, and we are go. We are down here. It is night two. Now, the Necromancer is not doing too well. He's behind the eight ball by at least a couple of big plays. So he gets to choose first. Now, he ha I've made it to this place here. So we can sit on here until we get a good hand and gain an artifact, possibly, if we get to six level. But I think our actual real plan is we have to go to this thing and buy some of these units because we need another unit slot taken. Now we are negative one. We do start the game with our infamous reprisals, which is handy. What I think I'm gonna actually do is get preparation, and I'm gonna use that to grab threaten. Okay, and this guy is going to take Mana Search because that's a good one to use. Now, I've done quite a lot of revisions to both the skills and cards between the last time you saw me play this. I've really toned down some of the abilities of the Dryad because they were really, really strong. I've completely rewritten a couple of the skills to be completely different skills and not even variants of the old skills. I just felt that she was producing way too much crystals and it was just making it very, very easy. Very fun to play, but uh, really, very unbalanced. Okay, so let's get into this. So what he's gonna do is he's gonna use two move. That's supposed to be there. He uses two move and that gets him onto the monastery. He then produces Infamous reprisals with a white, and he produces influence with a red. So he uses this ability here. It says, discard a wound to gain a black mana token, or throw away a wound to turn any one black mana into a red or green mana token. If a die is affected, then it returns to the resource without re-rolling. So we are going to throw away a wound going to turn the black into a red we get the token and we pay for that we have produced five from here and let's just have a look at the current state of the necromancer promise treat x on the recruitment track as negative five or four influence that's the first thing you do you may pay a black mana even during the day to corrupt a unit during an interaction it gains the thug recruitment symbol. You may pay an additional black mana for plus one influence each. We've already used this ability and we don't have any black mana up here. So we have only created a total of four plus five is nine 
Now over here, we're negative one, so we've created eight influence, which means we can get this guy. Uh, no, we can get this guy, or we can get this guy. And considering all our wounds, I think I'm actually gonna get this guy. So we get, we've spent three of our eight, okay? And then if we go over here, we also have healing for two. That's three, four, five, six, seven. So we heal two and we gain a herbalist. And that's his first move. Kablam. Meanwhile, this guy, his plan is to come over here and then come down to here. So he needs five, ten. We have four. And I'll just do that for five. Takes him into the swamp. And we'll also do a heal. Now I've changed this. This used to create green crystals, but now it doesn't. I can heal, but I don't get a crystal anymore. Okay, so we are no longer next to our keep. So we're now only drawing to five cards. And we still have a nice wound there. So I'm gonna go crystallize green, gain a green crystal, and discard that. He is no long he is still next to his keep, so he's still drawing to eight. We need another. That's four. We're going to use the emerald crystal thing here to gain a green mana crystal, which we're using to pay for this. So that is four move. And I think I'll just do this one at six move. That gets us into here. And this guy attacks. Actually, so we're not going to use that card. We're going to use this card. That is five move to move into the forest because remember it's night time, so forests are five. This guy is attacking us. We're going to pay with the white mana die. That's three attack. Elusive two plus one is three. Whatever, the point is he's dead. That gives him plus one and it gives him plus one. It also gives him an elementalist token is awesome. Come back here, draw another five. We now have two wounds in our hand. That is not good. I'm just gonna go bam, pay with a green. And that is heal two. So both of these are healed. And we need four to move into here. So I'm just gonna go bam and four. And that moves me into the labyrinth again. So basically, because we took so many wounds in the last turn, we <laughs> did a whole bunch of moves then just to get our healing back, and we're back where we started. This guy is still drawing up to six now because he's no longer next to his keep. Lamb. Okay, so we have one move and we have a concentration. How many moves have we used? We've only used one, two of our moves. So I think I might hold out for another turn, see what's coming. So let's do our crystallize. We'll crystallize a blue and we'll take a blue. Blam. Over here, we are now next to our keep. So we're drawing to eight again. Okay, so we have a pretty good hand here. We don't have a move though. How many moves have we used? We've got one move, two move. We've got no combat. We've got this for five combat. We've got this for five combat. So we can do 10 attack. We've got a wound so we can do our black mana draw. We do have Mana draw as well and a white. So we're actually not in that bad position. I think I'm actually going to attack. 
So if I go, you know what I'm going to do? Um, oh dear. So if I go, oh dear. So this would mean I have to discard three cards. So instead, I'm just going to do a slow heal. Okay, this guy is still drawing up to six. Want a move card? No, we get a heal. I guess I'm just going to have to do this. So I'm going to do mana draw. Use the white mana. I'm going to turn this into a green. And take two green tokens. I place one on concentration. This is now as a six, a six move, which means we go into the top level of the labyrinth. Oh yeah. That means we draw a dragon. Yunk. Okay, so we need to do 14 attack or we need to do six or seven attack. So we've got four, five, six, seven attack. And we can block with this. We block with this. This gives us cold fire attack or block five. You may pay with a blue or red mana to increase this to seven. So let's play with a red mana. That means that we have blocked seven cold fire, which means this guy is blocked, which means that this guy is dead. With a, uh, we have to use a blue, beg your pardon, and a red there. That's what we're doing. And this is no longer being used. So to recap, we didn't even we didn't actually need to change these colors. Whatever. The point is we did mana draw, we got two green crystals. We use one crystal on concentration for plus two. We use move four, which means we get six move, which means we draw a dragon at the deepest part of the labyrinth. We then did our block five using the mage here, but we paid a blue mana to increase it to block seven, and it is cold fire block which means this guy is blocked because he's only doing six. Because we blocked, elusive does not trigger, which means he's seven attack, four, five, six, and seven. So that is one dead dragon, Blamo. So that's seven, he is 41, so he gets to 48, he has leveled up. And, we also did the deepest part of the labyrinth, which means we get an artifact. Ooh, holy grail. Oh, banner of courage. So this allows us to ready units. So we're definitely gonna take that. Yonk. Now it was a pity the uh, necromancer didn't get that holy grail. Right, and that is that. Just uh, mark this spot. We're still drawing up to eight cards. Okay, so we have four. Okay, so firstly, I'm gonna do Crystal Mastery so we get all our crystals back. So I'm doing four. Five, uh, four, five, six, big pardon. And we have gotten into the deepest part of the labyrinth. Let's take a card. Your blamo. Okay, so this is five fast, which means we have to block for 10. So we've got block five here. So we pay one to block five. We pay another one. Plus we do this thing here. This gives us a blue or white red mana token. So that is five blocks. We've done 10 block, which means we've blocked this successfully. And now we need to do nine attack. So we can just do five, because you can take one unit into the labyrinth. That's five. Six, seven, eight, nine. So we have killed him. 
Now we want to resurrect him using our undead horde. He is seven fame divided by two rounded up, which means that we need four mana for that. And if we want to re-resurrect this guy, we need two mana, which isn't too hard because we do have mana draw. So we go mana draw, pay with a white crystal, and mana draw says, set it to any color except gold, which means we can set it to black. So we set this one to black. We get two black tokens. And remember, black is worth two. That's one, two, three, four. That pays for him. And then we pay another two tokens to keep this guy resurrected. And that is that. So he's resurrected. So now we've got two dragons in this horde. And this guy here is a two level unit. So that horde has got all we can have in it. And that's basically it. And because of crystal mastery, we get all our spent crystals back. Bam, bam, bam. The blam, the blam, blam. And the blam. You know what I should have done when I was in the in the monastery? I should have bought spell force. Oh well, it doesn't matter. Okay, so that was a pretty good move for him. I don't think I even used a die. Yes, I did. I used I used mana draw on a die. Whatever. The point is that we have done that. This dragon is not as good as the other dragon, but we do get seven XP. Takes us twenty six. So he is twenty six. Uh, that's thirty three, and he gets minus one, two, three. For the resurrection and then minus another three for the resurrection of the other guy so he's now in the x space okay he also gets an artifact your blamo Ooh, and the blamo Ooh, wow these are both really really good this one might be really good to try because it'll allow me to test the more of the Dryad's abilities. So normally I would take this one because it's just an amazing blocking card, but I'm going to take the Circlet of Proficiency instead. Okay, so he's drawing to six. La blam. We are going to place this here at uh, Laxo. And what this basically says is, once around, except during combat, you may flip this card face down to ready this unit. So we're just gonna flip it now. And this unit is now readied. And we need five to get into here. We have, I'm gonna go five. Blam. He is still drawing to eight because he's still next to his keep. Wow. Got three more wounds. He had so many wounds in his deck. What is he going to do? Basically, he is way behind. He needs to get some power. So he's got two choices. He can go up here and just attack the city. The city's not that hard. It's just two greys and uh, white. So it's technically a bit easier than the blue, which is a gray and a mage tower and a white. Thing is, I'm thinking his best play is actually to come down here, attack this, kill this, get two artifacts, kill this, get a spell, and either go up or maybe even go around the side like this and end up here at the third night and take that city then. That's what I think is actually the best play because there's quite a lot of XP there, huge amounts of XP to be honest, especially here. So what we're going to do, pity about all these wounds, we're going to do circle of proficiency, use any non-interactive skill in the common skill offer, including your own, as if it was a skill. If the skill is usable each turn, as in it does not flip, use it twice. And there is a great skill we're going to use, plus two move at night, plus one move during the day, reduce the movement cost of swamps by one. So we use that twice, that's plus four move at night, plus swamps and minus one. So we've already got four move, plus this, that is eight move. That gives us one, two, three, 
four, five, six, seven, eight, and bam, we're right where we want to be. Okay, draw up to six. We have Heroic Tail and we have Influence. So heal one, gain a white or red mana token. So bam, that's heal one. Gain a white. This one is also a heal. Uh, no, oh, we've used the other heal. So the, that, that's the other heal there. There is no white up here, but we'll use the white crystal. This is six, seven, eight, nine, ten plus two, so we have 12 influence. There is nine influence here. This needs 16. Well, we'll just get that one. Oh wait, we're on a, we're on a monastery. So this is nine. We've produced six, 10, 12, because we are plus two. That means we have three more influence, so we're gonna heal for two. Now this is Heroic Tale, so we get fame and reputation bonuses as well. So reputation at one, and a fame at one. And we have this nice little mage. Okay, finally on this guy's turn, we are going to, nothing we can do, but we are gonna discard all that and call end of round. So it gets one last turn. There's quite a lot of movement. So he's gonna tap this and gain a red crystal. And he basically doesn't wanna use any of his move. He's got quite a lot of move here. He could move here and then he would need five to get into the city, but he starts with a gold. Well, the problem with that is you basically have to use the gold to get into the city. So I think he's just gonna stay where he is. Now, because he's used a this ability, we can't just end our turn, but I will just discard and that ends my turn. This guy is already finished and that is the end of the night round. Blam, bonk and bonk and bonk. Day, bonk and this flips over. Shuffle these guys and he is still next to a keep. So he draws to eight still. And this guy is next to a city, but no one's controlling it yet. So he only draws to six. Nice, he has undead horde in hand. That is the end of day two, uh, night two. So I think, the changes I did to the Dryad are actually pretty good. They, because basically she was just taking damage, healing, and gaining crystals. So she was getting, re she was getting, she was killing, getting XP, getting rid of the wounds, and gaining crystals all in one skill. And it was just super strong. And I know that those skills already exist. Like, let me just say this. So Wolfhawk already has these skills. So gain a crystal, gain a heal. That's what I based her skills on. So her skills were basically exactly the same as this, except they did green and white instead of blue and white. But I just felt that it was super strong. And granted, you need to get that combo running. Maybe I'll put them back. But I've kind of turned them into a cross between this skill, which allows you to get mana tokens of your choice, and this skill. So it's basically this skill, but allows you to choose your token. So the new one is, heal one, gain a green or blue mana token. So it's better than this one, basically, but not as good as this one. So that was the real major change I did to her. Okay, well, that's that. I will see you guys next time. I'm actually really enjoying this particular game. I'm gonna keep playing this. I think the Necromancer might be able to make a big comeback and then be up here to take the city at the end of the night. The problem is 
what what have we got here in the that's a mage tower there's only one more object that he can buy at the monastery but we do have mana storm we do have blood rage that's an excellent excellent one because of her heals and we've got ancient blood of ancients so there's great 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 uh there is a monastery right here it'd be awesome if you could get blood rage anyway i'll see you guys next time